obviously going to sit with you, but I want to introduce to, to you to all these amazing human beings. So Wendy Grant John, Councillor, Musqueam Chief and Council. Elhaj Asi, Secretary General, International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Regina Honu, CEO, Soronco Solutions. Martina Guire, showing off my Spanish. <laughs> CEO, no, sorry, journalist El Pais Uruguay, WD Media Scholar, and Maria Turpakai Wazir, professional squash player and founder, president, Maria Turpakai Foundation. Welcome. <laughs> it's unbelievable how this conference is reuniting people with such different backgrounds and rich history and also um, stories of suffering that need to be shared so pe people can slowly heal as we all heal as a nation when we share our story. All right, Maria. Maria, for years you had to disguise yourself uh, as a boy to play sports in your country. And I don't know if this is true, but you actually had to hide for three years. And so that's true? Inside your home. Yes. Incredible. Um, Tell us you had more fun as a girl. <laughs> okay, you don't have to answer. <laughs> um, so, how have you used sports to actually not have to hide from who you are, whoever you are? Um, well, coming from the tribal regions of Pakistan, which is on the Afghanistan border, um, you see the extreme patriarchal system, and it's not only the mindset of men, but it also exists in women, which makes it very difficult to overcome that, those challenges, and who, who girls can't be themselves, because women also believe in the same values and same uh, system. And they keep uh, you know, giving those teachings to their daughters that they are not equal to men or boys or their brothers. And, uh, uh, but through sports, um, you know, I, um, uh, but for, six, you know, for 16 years, I was able to pretend as a boy, as Genghis Khan, and that gave me all the freedom uh, that I wanted. Uh, but also this area, as you see, it's uh, extremely affected with terrorism and extremism, and that's the reason because the culture is extremely with guns and weapon, uh, weapons, you know, guns and drugs. Uh, part of it. And I always tell the people to not call my people terrorists because they were only given guns and drugs. I wish they were given sports and books long time ago. We would have, you know, different people out there. And we know them, you know. <laughs> we, we are only known for exporting terrorism, but I'm the example, I'm the first uh, you know, athlete from there. And you know, every, all the children have, you know, kids, we are humans, we are all the same, whether in the US, Canada, or you know, in, in the East or West, where, wherever, we are all the same. And we see the countries that are spending 80% of their GDP on defense. I want to tell them, we don't need your defense. Do not spend that money on you know, attaining nuclear weapons or uh, uh, you know, conventional weapons. We don't need your defense. Spend that for those funds on women, on their well-being, sports, and education. And you, that is the protection that will make you more safer without all those weapons. Thank you so much. <laughs> What do, you, what do you think, but given this context, what do you think still is the greatest challenge that girls face? Sorry, what? What do you still think is the biggest challenge that girls face? I, as I mentioned, you know, the mindset, the patriarchal system of men and women, but we need to change that. Mm -hmm. And I come from the region, and I've seen, when I started first playing, I was the only one. And now I see, you know, uh, I, let me tell you the story. Um, few girls came to me, and they said they want to play sports like me. So when I took them to the squash court, they were, came in burqa, they changed in tracksuit, and the first time they started playing and stretched for the ball, you know, to get the ball, they just felt huge boost and freedom, and they thought we couldn't even do that. We don't know if we could do that. 
So that's a huge change that they can see. Uh, and I, I strongly believe in the power of, power of sports. I changed. And I really want to say thank you to Canada because I came to Canada. I was accepted here. Uh, and I, the, when we give love to people, we heal them. And that's so important. And that's the same thing I want to, I want to pr proudly say this is my home, Canada. And um, also want to thank uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau for being so accepting of everyone. And, uh, you know, we need more leaders who believe in equality there. And equality, when we talk about equality and feminism, um, feminism is when we give power to w women over themselves, not men. And that's where equality starts. And that's where I fi find here. And I also want to salute uh, Jacinda Ardern, uh, the uh, New Zealand Prime Minister. After Christchurch, the steps that she took against weapons and also to give a message to the world how we should treat our minorities. I think these are the examples the world leaders should follow. And quickly, uh, Maria, because right here in Canada, one out of two girls will drop out of sports when she reaches puberty. It's a big problem. I'm sure that in some other countries you might be facing some challenges as well, but how do you think um, sports can be a tool to be more inclusive and let everybody express? Girls, boys, gender diverse, it doesn't matter. How can sports be a tool for that, for free expression? And inclusivity. Oh, well, we think that you know we, and when we look at the education, we think more degrees, more certificates, more jobs. We only think of that message from on, you know from education nowadays. And then we think of sports, more money, more win, more lose, you know those kind of things. But there are so many messages, there are so many lessons that we learn on the field, on the courts, and there, those are very important to you know. And children learn when they are happy. Let them be happy enjoy their life and that's uh you know how we, uh, we we have seen the examples also if you look at the international level we have seen the examples of uh north korea and south korea when the olympic happened and their uh, teams came together sports is a great unifier it brings people together and bring peace and united nations believe in that that we can achieve sdgs uh, you know, with the help of sports and Pope, Pope Francis, who also says that uh, the way we uh, challenge ourselves in sports, if we start challenging ourselves in life, we can make the world much more uh, a happier place. This is linked, Maria. I, it's not a question that you saw, but don't worry, you don't, it will make you feel comfortable. It says that there are so many young people out there whose mentors are not elders who are celebrities, right? And especially in the sports industry. They gain celebrity status incredibly, and it's like an exponential salary and, and, and exposure. And of course, uh, there is some merit to, to that, but do you feel responsible as, as a public figure in sports to lead by example? Uh, I think everyone should feel to lead by example. Uh, it's not a celebrity, or it's not the question, it's everybody I think is unique and if we are more responsible, we wouldn't, would, we wouldn't see that, that many issues in the world. But because there are people who are irresponsible, that's why things are happening. And <laughs> coming to your question, the you know, parents, the fathers, uh, uh, participation in the family, uh, I feel that I have a, you know, a very good father and I have very good brothers and uh, uh, his teaching and his, his involvement was very important uh, and he led by example. Uh, he would not only talk but he would you know, actually work, you know, clean floors with my mom or cook, you know, or give showers to the kids. Usually men don't uh, touch their kids because they think, you know, they should, they are higher authority and uh, the kids should have a little bit fear from them. And the best thing parents and fathers can do uh, can always give time to their children. Time is more uh, important than anything else, any valuable gift. So that's important. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Beautifully said. Merci, Martin. And what about you, Maria? How will you use your power? Um, well, let me start with the story. 
uh, when I got threats from the Taliban and I took all the record to the police station. And when they uh, registered the FIR, uh, they also uh, you know, told me to keep a gun with me to protect myself. But I don't believe in guns and I don't believe in weapons. So I said, my racket is my weapon and sports is the fight that I'm going to, is my fight against them. And that's why I, uh, you know, my foundation, Maria Chirupakai Foundation's mission is to replace weapons with sports. And <laughs> coming from tribal areas, when, we, when I saw uh, millions of people uh, of my region are uh, displaced and when the army operation started against uh, Taliban terrorists, um, I couldn't think of anything else at that time because women were suffering, children were suffering, so, and they were residing on my dad's land, you know, they were uh, camping there. So the first thing I did was uh, building a hospital for women and children, which I did. But then this was most important at that time, uh, but I really want to build sports centers for young girls in Pakistan and Afghanistan and, um, you know, want to see many more young girls playing sports and without any fear, they should feel accepted, respected, supported, and their uniqueness should be valued. Can we all do like a huge dinner all together? <laughs> this is great. Thank you for your authenticity, for your honesty. Um, let's always express to the world that, you know, the, the fight for gender equality is not a fight between the genders, but a fight for the harmony and the unity of genders, and that no matter where you come from and no matter what your history and what is behind us is never, never as strong as what is within us. So thank you all for being here today.